Excellent. Did you need a sound check? Yeah, Megan Scanlon, Environment Minister. One, two, three. All good. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> wonderful to be here today with Joan Peace, who's the local MP here. We've got Julie from Healthy Land and Water and, of course, Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service, who have been doing a phenomenal job. Uh, we know the floods have had a big impact in terms of uh, the rubbish that's been generated, and so there are huge clean-ups that are underway. And I want to acknowledge the huge efforts that, you know, community members, volunteers have done to just help out their neighbours uh, to make sure that their homes are cleaned up and their businesses are cleaned up. But what we know is that there's a big effort that needs to be taken uh, to clean up our marine parks and our national parks. In fact, we have around 40 national parks that are closed or temporarily closed right now so that we can assess the damage and do that important clean-up work. So to support our rangers, to support uh, Maritime Safety Queensland, we are providing funding to incredible community organisations organisations so that we can scale up that effort to try and clean up even more on our beautiful waterways. Our healthy land and water is doing some really important work out on our oceans uh, and our river systems to try and clean up before it gets to places like this and we have other organisations like Ocean Crusaders who have been out there doing their part to try and clean up and speed up this recovery as quickly as possible. Uh, all of this is to try and make sure that we're ready for that Easter holiday season where we want our ecotourism products to be ready to go for people to experience. So uh, this is about making sure we can get as many people out there. And can I you know, just acknowledge the incredible volunteers who have given up their own time to get out there and help us clean up. I have heard so many wonderful stories of people giving up their time, sometimes people who have been impacted themselves to help other people out. And that is uh, just wonderful. So as I said, this will be around $740,000 to go to a number of different organisations to help them with those, those clean up efforts. I might hand over to Joan now and we'll do questions at the end if that works. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you very much. It's great to be here today and I'm really, like the Minister, I'd like to echo her words to thank the wonderful community effort, uh, not just here down in the Bay but all across South East Queensland. It's so heartwarming, people helping each other, whether it be helping clean up or just helping them with a hand with their businesses. So I really appreciate all of the efforts that everyone has gone to. I'd like to acknowledge the great work of the people that are out there looking after our environment. We're at the gateway to the wonderful and beautiful Moreton Bay, as you can see it behind me, and we've got the islands at the back as well and so it's so important that we protect this beautiful part of the world so I'm delighted that my good friends Ocean Crusaders uh, have received some funding to go out there and keep our waterways nice and clean and healthy so I'm really excited to help and work with our Ocean Crusaders and all of the other environmental groups B4C, uh, Bilimba Creek Catchment Group and Wynnum Catchment Group and my own Wynnum Creek cleanup crew so thank you very much everyone and thank you to the Minister and all of the Department of Works and pa sorry, Parks and Wildlife that have done an amazing job each and every day and even more so now. So thank you to you and your staff for everything you've done for the great work. It's really, really important what you do. So thank you. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. And um, thank you, Minister, for, for this funding. It's, it's really timely because at Healthy Land and Water, the key to getting stopping all of this rubbish getting into the beautiful Moreton Bay and then up out to the oceans is to trap it and, and pull it out of the water um, where, where it, from the source almost. So one of the things that we've been doing over the last 20 years is running a clean-up um, clean boat clean up boats actually out in the out in the estuaries in the rivers and what that does we understand where those hot litter hot spots are and we're able to get in there and remove that litter before it ends up travelling out here. It's a lot harder as you'd imagine to pick water out of the ocean than it is to pick litter out of the ocean than it is to pick out of the rivers. So part of the clean up campaign and having this extra funding is we can actually get started right now. We'll be, we'll be loading up funding, rolling out by Monday or Tuesday next week. Now it's safe to do so and because of the, all the years of collecting this litter we actually understand where to head so we can get maximum bang for buck. So thank you, Minister, and um, yeah, we'll get started and get cracking on getting this litter out of the waterways. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, it, um, Parks and Wildlife Rangers have been working across uh, South East Queensland and all the way up into Wide Bay. The, the floods have been far-reaching. We found a pontoon all the way up at Eli Creek on Gari. So it, it's a massive area that we've got to clean up. Um, we've been working very closely with Maritime Safety Queensland and our First Nations partners, first in the initial response and now in the clean-up efforts. So each park is gradually uh, opening up. Some tracks um, 
are inaccessible at the moment and we ask people to go to the website and have a look at the park alerts and they will let you know what parts are, parks are open and what tracks are open on the various parks before you head out to the parks. Uh, it's fantastic to hear um, that we've got all these great volunteers who've got funding to come and help us with this cleanup to stop the, the rubbish coming into the bay. Um, that is magnificent, so thank you very much. And just to clarify, so this funding will help those community organisations purchase things like PPE, equipment, do that coordination to really scale up their efforts so that we can get as much rubbish out of these beautiful places as possible. Any questions? Minister, yeah. Yeah, so we're still we're still obviously doing that important analysis work. That's why it's great to get as many people out as possible. And of course, we'll then monitor how much rubbish has been collected and the impact that's having on our both marine uh, parks and our national parks. Uh, we we have some early indications, but of course, time will tell. And that's why we need to do everything we can to try and speed up these efforts uh, as quickly as possible, so that we can get some of these quite harmful and damaging products out of our waterways. Uh, well, ultimately, that decision is won by the Commonwealth. And as the Prime Minister has already said, it's actually just to uh, reduce red tape at the Commonwealth level. We already have our own measures in place that we are doing and rolling out. Queensland knows how to deal with disasters very well. Uh, frankly, you know, if the Prime Minister uh, was serious about this, if it was really about uh, reducing red tape to roll out Commonwealth support, then you've got to ask, why did it take so long? It was it for a picture op because you know it took them two weeks to come here to make a decision that could have been made some time ago. Uh, look, obviously, for obvious reasons, we don't disclose what conversations have uh, had been taken at Cabinet. But, you know, from the very get-go, we have been very clear in uh, supporting Queenslanders through this flood recovery. Uh, as I said, Queensland knows how to deal with disasters. We get out on the ground as soon as possible to help communities. That's the Premier's number one priority, is to make sure uh, that communities are supported, that we are doing everything we can to help those people in need. Uh, look, obviously it's uh, welcome that they've made the decision, but it would have been good earlier and, you know, we still, we'd still like to see more support from the Commonwealth. There's a $4.8 billion fund that has accrued more interest than has actually been delivered on the ground. Uh, I think Queenslanders have a very, uh, have, you know, some serious questions to ask of the Commonwealth around where are they? What, what support are they providing to people on the ground who need it right now? Uh, we know that Lismore is getting double the financial support compared to Queenslanders who have been impacted. You've got to ask, there, there, there's some pretty serious political questions here uh, around why someone in New South Wales gets more than a flood recovery victim in Queensland. Julie McClellan. Yep. Look, every, anything and everything. We, we probably won't be picking up massive pontoons, um, but we certainly pick up litter. So any of the, the plastic waste, which will be everywhere, tyres, car doors, um, anything that's sort of relatively up to about this size. But the beauty of this is not only do we know where that litter, generally where those hot spots are, so we can get there rapidly, we will also keep a, keep a catalogue of all of that litter and also where they are so that we will be able to inform other community groups, you know, when they sort of get some money and can actually get out there. And so it'll be a continuous effort, but this will really get, a, get us out there fast so we can get in quick. Yeah. Uh, Steve Hozak. Uh, we don't know exactly where it came from, but it's somewhere up the Brisbane River. Um, we've had them uh, on Tiwa Beach as well. Morton Island had probably 10 on Morton Island. Tiwa Beach has got 10 or 12, um, all up and down the coast. That's a pristine waterway. Absolutely, and one of the things that's um, really damaging is they're made of coolite, which you can see on the trailer behind us there. Uh, and once that breaks up, it's very, very small little particles, and these um, may be ingested by things like hatchling turtles. So we've got to be very careful to clean that up um, quickly uh, and effectively.
Yes, yeah, so as, as usual, Queensland continues to take the advice of the Chief Health Officer. Uh, we've requested some of that advice from the AHPPC, as have other states, and we look forward to receiving that advice so that we can make decisions accordingly. Anything else? Excellent. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now I hope you all enjoy all the beautiful cafes and restaurants. Yeah. And the